for this intro, I'm going to prove that polar bears are just as cuddly as normal teddy bears. Hi, how's it going? Would you, would you like, would you like, would you like salmon? Take the, take the, take the stupid salmon. Ow. Come on, take the salmon. It's not a simple, it's not a hard concept. You just need it. Ow. Well, I guess that's not gonna happen. Hello, everybody. I'm Maximum Panic, and welcome back to my bonus channel, where today I'm uploading another Minecraft video all about building stuff. So what would you guys say is the most important part about starting a Minecraft survival series? Is it getting food to survive the night? Is it getting your first piece of armor? Making your first crafting table? Slaying your first zombie? Or punching your first piece of wood from a tree? Personally, I would say none of that. What matters to me first and foremost is making a little place that I can call my home. Or rather, my starter base. I would say the starter bases are pretty important because it's the first place that you're ever gonna call home and the place where you really start off on your big Minecraft journey. And today, I just felt like making another couple dozen bases. But I'm doing it with a twist. And if you saw the thumbnail before you clicked on this video, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you like Minecraft videos and the elements of storytelling mixed together like I do, then I have no doubts that at this point you must have watched a couple of series made by different content creators covering entire multiplayer servers. To name a few in recent history, we have the Double Life SMP, the Last Life SMP, the Rats SMP, we've got the Dream SMP, most famously, we've got the Hermitcraft server, just as famously, and the topic of today's video, the Empire's SMP. Now I know what a handful of you must be thinking. What is the Empire's SMP and why am I just now hearing about this? Well, well, let me give you a little rundown. The Empire's SMP in its simplest form is a survivor multiplayer server consisting of 13 different content creators who each have their own character with their own backstory, lore, powers, abilities, whatever you want to call them, and each one of them goes off to create their own empire with their own unique themes and their own exports. Now, some of the people on this server, they either tune in just to build stuff and relax a little bit, some of them want to have fun with their friends, whether that means hunting down wardens or even getting into all-out prank wars, and then there's a rare case where a few of them actually make some pretty deep lore and storytelling mechanics and wind up creating Creating these little emotional masterpieces. But the bottom line is, they're all there to have fun and basically partake in a Minecraft D&D campaign. <laughs> if you're anything like me and you'd like to live vicariously through the Empire's SMP members' videos, then I have no doubt that at some point you must have imagined what it would be like to build a base inspired by one of these empires, or rather what kind of base you would make to feel like you belong as part of the Empire's SMP. As for me in this case, if I got to make a base that could fit into any one of these empires, what would I make and what would it look like? Well, that's kind of the reason we're here today now, isn't it? So what do you say we get on started with these Empire's SMP inspired Minecraft bases? Let's go! For my first base, I wanted to model it after one of the most iconic empires on the server, the Land of Sanctuary built by Mr. Mythical Sausage. Sausage has explained over the course of his videos that his empire is based heavily on Disney's Encanto, which entails building in the style of Colombian architecture and using lots of colorful blocks. The structures themselves are generally built in boxy shapes and with certain builds are sometimes stacked on top of each other. A lot of the build style here is in the details, which means that while the base can be made up of basic blocks like mud or sandstone, the further additions and decorations are often made out of spruce or jungle woods, as well as detailed blocks like prismarine, cobblestone, or glazed terracotta. What I'm making here is primarily inspired by Sausage's starter base on Empire Season 2. There's a first floor with a front porch, a second floor made out of spruce and blue terracotta, and a little garage constructed from mud and basic terracotta, just in case you need somewhere to park your horse. <laughs> Sanctuary is also built in a jungle biome, so I landscaped the base with some bamboo shoots and a dirt path. And I added in lots of flowers, especially sunflowers, because the main religion of Sanctuary is Santa Perla, the sunflower goddess. Although, now the beat-ups has entered the server, uh, that could change pretty quickly. <laughs> base number two is inspired by Scott Major's empire of Chromia. Chromia is described as a place to die for, pun fully intended, and like Sanctuary, it's very colorful in design. The buildings have a more medieval architectural style, constructed from birch and oak wood with warped or crimson roofs. This empire was built in a meadow biome, which obviously warrants flowers just about all over the place. For my take on a Chromia build, I decided to construct a house with a simple gable roof and then attach a small tower with a cone spire to the side. I also textured the base with birch wood and sandstone to keep with the light beige color scheme, but true to Chromia, one roof is made out of crimson wood and the other with warped wood. To make the place extra cozy, I attached the front porch with a spruce overhang and lined it with mud bricks just to break out the beige color scheme a little bit. Considering Scott's vivid choice of colors, his day job as a tailor, and his night job running an underground market, I think I can safely say that this empire is the epitome of be gay do crimes. 
But that build wasn't nearly a crime compared to the next one I'm gonna do here. This base is inspired by Catherine Elizabeth's Empire of Glimmer Grove. Glimmer Grove is very princess-like in design, as was stated a while back on the famous Empire's mood board. The builds here are made out of diorite, calcite, white wool, and quartz, with pink roofs to really sell that pretty princess aesthetic. But thanks to a certain princess's side hustle as a monster slayer, the other half of the kingdom takes a dark turn with builds made out of great concrete, deep slate, and basalt. The base I made follows the same color palette, but with a few small additions. I decided to make a gradients room for this one with pink lace terracotta, pink wool, purple blocks, amethyst, blue terracotta, and gray concrete. The amethyst blocks were used to make a dividing line between the two color palettes and provide a smoother transition. I also lined the dark side of the castle with some stone bricks to help distinguish between the walls and the roof. I also accented the dark side with some polished basalt columns, and I textured the walls with a combination of black stone, deep slate bricks, and basalt. Even the flowers that I planted around here respect the split color scheme. The ones on the light side are very light and pink, whereas on the dark side, since the land is decaying, I think, I planted some dead bushes, brown mushrooms, and wither roses. The resulting contrast of this space is practically night and day, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Although, if you fancy a build that's more airborne, take a look at base number 4, inspired by smallish beans of Sky High Empire of Stratos. Joel's empire has a very palatial Greek mythology motive going on, so it's no wonder why it doesn't even touch the ground. For Empire Season 2, Joel put a unique spin on his empire by building a basic lore village on the ground below, whereas his home turf, aka the Land of the Gods, floats in the sky right above it. Lots of the terrain is made up of hovering platforms that wouldn't be so easy to traverse without a pair of elytra wings. I mean, just look at what happened to Green and Scar. <laughs> but for this one, I based the build on Upper Stratos design, which fitting of a god involved using a snort load of quartz, accented with raw gold blocks, some glazed terracotta, and oxidized copper to bring in some green for contrast. I added some grass and flowers to make a floating garden, and voted to use archways because apparently gods are too good for doors, before lining the grass blocks with trap doors and running off the bottom of the build with some golden mangrove. I guess it's some kind of propeller type design. Yeah, that's probably it. But overall, I would say that the Stratos base is a perfect fit for a god just starting out. How I managed to fit a build with an ego this big into one chunk, I have no idea. <laughs> But of course, what's a god without a sheriff to try and bring him down to size? Base number 5 takes after the style of Tumbletown, built and run by what? I mean, Jimmy, aka Solidarity Gaming. Tumbletown, if you didn't guess based on the name, is a wild west town with a large railroad system and lots of wooden buildings located in the Mesa Vile. Jimmy is the local sheriff whose main mission is to make the other empires respect the law, but we all know that that's not happening anytime soon. The builds in Tumbletown are almost entirely made out of wood, primarily oak and spruce, but there's a few that have some more colorful blocks incorporated like warped wood or mangrove to bring in some color. They're also very simple in design, so for this one I opted to make a classic saloon with the front porch and a second floor balcony. I hate the fact that a lot of old western builds have generally flat walls all around, but you know what? That's just how the tumbleweed rolls in Trouble Town. As much as I would have loved to incorporate some Toy Story references in this, for obvious reasons, I figured I'd give the sheriff a break considering that that's Joel's area of expertise. But for a few final touches, I added in a dirt path and a few Scar Ponderosa pine trees to help bring some life into this land. Designed courtesy of Deputy in Training, Good Times with Scar. Now, does that look like a base fitting of a Tumblr Town sheriff or what? On the other hand, if you prefer a build that's inspired by something a lot more mischievous, then I think this next one might just suit your fancy. The next build belongs to the Empire of Gobland, owned and operated by local mischief-making goblin, Fwip. Gobland is a subterranean empire built beneath a large mountain and adopts a more industrial style compared to its next-door neighbors. The builds here are a mix of medieval and modern styles, and sometimes they're built so close to each other, they're almost stacked up the sides of the cave. The Empire has a lot of fun little features, like ladder windows, crooked chimneys, copper accents, and mangrove of root walls that keep the inhabitants from accidentally wandering into the ancient city directly beneath the empire. So for this base, I added some of that goblin wonk by meshing two buildings together and making them at different heights. Who knew that no blocks and dripstone made for such neat accents? Sadly, since the build is underground, that means no pretty front yard. We're just gonna decorate it with some deep slate and dripstone stalactites and call it a day. Another empire I consider to be just as wonky as Goblin is the Evermore, inhabited by the Swamp Witch Shovel. Centered in a mangrove swamp, the Evermore is quite the spooky destination, considering it's apparently haunted and the fog eats souls. But Shovel or Shelby's builds here are very mystical, from the main hut shaped like a witch hat to the mushroom potion shop and the starter house which apparently sprouted out of the ground. I don't know. <laughs> I love the idea of a hut with a roof shaped like a hat, so I tried to do the same. The base is a mix of oak logs, spruce logs, and barrels, and the top is lined with some soul sand to 
incorporate those sweet, spooky vibes. The roof was a pain to figure out, but I settled on a design made out of purple concrete, purple terracotta, and crimson wood for the hat colors, whereas the edges are lined with polished deep slate slabs. The terrain around the hut is pretty messy with a nice mix of mud, dirt paths, and moss blocks because, let's face it, when was the last time you saw a perfectly manicured front yard in the middle of a swamp? <laughs> Not gonna lie though, this Evermore-inspired base is quite possibly my favorite overall. I would gladly sell my soul to live in a hut as cute as this. I know the muddy swamp terrain isn't really for everybody, but if you want a base that makes you feel like a ray of sunshine, try this next one. Base number 8 is inspired by the Empire of Dawn! Created by Minecraft's favorite butterfly princess, Gemini Tay, Dawn is a medieval-style kingdom themed around the sun that specializes in harvesting crops and honey, as well as worshipping... sleep. Yeah, I said sleep, I don't really get it either. But regardless, Dawn's color palette is just like its namesake. Red, orange, and yellow, with the building foundations made from spruce, dark oak, mangrove, and light stone materials. There's lots of block radiance in the builds as well, so for my Dawn-inspired base, I chose to do the very same. The building is a medieval house with a right-angle addition, with a few gable roofs, a hanging lantern sign, and a base made from a mix of oak and spruce wood. To give it a little rustic feel, I made a cobbled path leading to the front door, planted a bunch of flowers, and made a wheat field in the front yard to really sell those friendly farmer vibes. It definitely looks cozy, and kind of tasty actually, but maybe that's just the pumpkin and honeycomb blocks talking. Then again, if you prefer the idea of Harry Potter meets steampunk, I think you're gonna like this next build. The next build comes from Cogsmeade, an empire founded by Empire's SMP newcomer False Symmetry. False's empire channels that steampunk aesthetic with tall towers crafted from stone, calcite, dark oak, mangrove, and copper. Lots and lots of copper to give the area both a medieval touch and that nice industrial feel. So, for my take on a Cogsmeade base, I followed suit by constructing two simple rectangular towers and gave them a stone to calcite gradient to help draw the eye further up the structures. Between them, I added a walkway and a few overpasses to help the build feel more open. The towers are framed by dark oak wood, and the roofs retain those pretty copper gradients to bring a dash of color to this build. For a nice final touch, I also added a fountain with a bell on top to make sort of a main square, and pay tribute to Cogsmeade's OG clock tower that sort of kicked off this empire's building style. Also, I added some pumpkins, because that seems to be an interesting plot point for this empire's ongoing lore. So, uh, we'll see what happens there. If you prefer a seaside location for your base, then why not try this next one? Base number 10 is inspired by the Empire of Eversea, aka the Forgotten Cove, built and helmed by pirate captain Joey Graceffa. Despite the current lack of pirate ships, Eversea is the epitome of swiggity swooty coming for the pirate booty, as if the storage house shaped like a treasure chest weren't already a dead giveaway. <laughs> I mean, this place has it all, including a fishing and prismarine shop, a parrot pet store, a set of docks to park your boats, and of course, a giant lighthouse with a pirate flag on top. So, to bring some of that colorful castaways fun into this build, I built the base on top of a pier and used some more vibrant colors for the base, including magenta and lime terracotta and light blue concrete. The acacia wood also helps to give this build a nice pop of color. But because this is supposed to look a little menacing, I guess, I lined the roofs with deep slate bricks and, just to make it sparkle, incorporated some raw gold blocks. If you ever want to feel like a pirate but stick to your humble beginnings, I think this might be just the perfect place to dock and down a bottle of rum during the night while you watch the dolphins swim on by. But if you fancy a build that's more focused on history as opposed to lore, consider this next base, which is inspired by the ancient capital, an empire owned, or rather resurrected, by server historian Pixel Riffs. Pixel has explained that rather than building up an empire in the present time, his focus for Empire Season 2 is bringing back the remnants of an ancient empire, or preserving moments in history. If it's anything with historic value, like Winston the Dodo or Andy's wallpaper, it's worth preserving for centuries to come. The color palette of the ancient capital overall is very monochromatic, with little color variation throughout the structures aside from maybe the roofs or the occasional warped wood facade. So, because this empire is obviously very old, the exterior consists almost entirely of stone blocks like basic stone, andesite, and basalt, whereas the roofs are crafted with oxidized copper blocks to show their age and are lined with deep slate and iron bars for some neat little accents. Sometimes in these builds, there's some vegetation like moss or glow lichen to show that they've slowly been taken over by nature over the last few centuries, but not so much that it draws attention away from the main details. In conclusion, if you're a fan of history or the origins behind the lore and stories, this ancient capital-inspired base might just be the place for you. If you want to make a base that gives off those really strong Disney Princess Cottage in the Wood kind of vibes, then I think I have just the base for you. The next base, despite its humble exterior, takes after the Empire of Animalia, ruled over by Mayor Lizzie, aka LD Shadow Lady. Animalia is just what it sounds like, an empire whose inhabitants are all animals and each inhabit their own district in the capital of Critter City. 
Lizzie can claim all she wants that she's a normal lady, but we all know what's hiding underneath that gigantic head of hers. <laughs> Regardless, Animalia's builds also put a soft spin on some medieval, almost fairy tale architecture, and are made up mostly of wool, concrete, spruce, and calcite blocks. The houses in the main district where the foxes reside have purple roofs and amethyst crystals for decoration, whereas in the froggy district, the roofs are green and drip leaves and glowberries decorate the area. So, to get the best of both worlds, I split the roof into two colors, one purple and one green, and I planted a couple of, uh, smoking azalea plants and sweetberry bushes to pay tribute to the foxes of Animalia. The base is also made out of white wool and calcite and framed by lots of spruce blocks to help give the base a visible frame. It's a very simplistic, almost cottage in the woods kind of vibe going on here, but it's also voted most likely to be visited and cleaned by woodland creatures. <laughs> For the 13th and final base, we're gonna go back to the beach and set up shop, or rather a tent, based on the Olopelagan Empire, founded by lovable bard Ollie, aka the Orion Sound. Ollie's empire is pretty much just tents at the moment, but proudly display this very vibrant, almost carnival-esque color palette, fitting of a vibrant musician such as himself. To keep with the theme of an empire just starting out, I also constructed the tent on the seaside, framed it with birch wood, and used about six or seven different colors of wool to make up the tent. Inside, I put the floor on an incline and abandoned all sense of reason when it came to interior decoration. Again, it's a tent, so I really didn't have to think much of it. But overall, I would say that this is a nice place to start out if you just so happen to have an abundance of wool. While some might call this Olopelagan base majestic, I like to call it highly flammable. But in all seriousness, if you're one of those players that has a loot handy and you love to play the campfire song song around a bonfire with your buddies, this is definitely the perfect base for you. And with that, folks, we officially did it! 13 different bases for 13 different empires, mission accomplished! It was a really fun process getting to make this video and analyzing all the different building styles that go into making each empire, as well as trying to make a base that would seamlessly fit into each one of them. Well, seamlessly might be stretching it a little bit, but the point is, I made these and I had a lot of fun doing it, which is all that matters in my case. But that also leads me to my next question. If you got to make a base of your own on an empire's SMP, what would you make? Where would you put it? What would it look like? How big would it be? And the most important one, what empire would you choose to put it in? But anyways, I'm gonna leave this video here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to watch these videos whenever they go up, because I really appreciate all the love and support that you guys pour into these things. But before I go, I am gonna point out one little thing. Some people must be asking themselves, uh, Manic, aren't there 14 empires now? To which I say, the answer to that is quite simple, really. Who knows, honestly? Maybe next time that I make a video, it'll be a whole other set of bases for a whole other SMP entirely. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!